YouTubers, welcome to a very special New Zealand housing scandal edition. There's so much happening in New Zealand. It's really hard for me to cover it in the Trends in the Housing Market series that I have every Wednesday night. Don't forget, guys, to join me every Wednesday Pacific time, 7 p.m. I don't know what that is in New Zealand. That would be Thursday. I think it's like 4 p.m. the next day over. So check your local listings and uh, see if you guys could join me. I would much appreciate it because we got lots to cover with New Zealand and it is definitely a housing scandal and people are being bought out at the seams. People are, New Zealand has sold itself out to the highest bidder and it's what Australia has done, the UK has done, Canada, kind of the United States, but remember United States has a lot more infrastructure and housing than all, all other countries put together. So, the United States is going to be interesting to see what's going to happen in the next 5 to 10 years. Uh, it will take a lot longer for it to penetrate the United States of America. But New Zealand's had its woes and up and uh, uh, lots of ups in prices and lots of downs in, 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 in living quality for people in New Zealand. Um, the cost of living going up, that's another up. And another down is meth homes, homes having to, having to be meth contaminated tested because there are a lot of homes that are tested for th uh, for for that and deems the uh, it would deem the property completely useless and unlivable and then you have uh, people being put up in hotels and motels because families entire families being put up in hotels because they're all sleeping in rough they're all sleeping in the rough if they're not so we got quite a bit to cover here and I want to cram it in this little segment here in New Zealand housing scandal. Guys, please share my videos out there. I know I'm not professional. I know I can't read. I know I'm not educated. But, I, I, you know, I really want people to understand that our futures have been sold out. Our kids' futures have been sold out. People are holding back from getting married because of this housing crisis. People are holding back from having children because of this housing crisis. This is holding back. And they keep talking about, oh, this increase in population in this we need more help. what increase in population if no one's having kids if no one could afford to have kids because they're being bought out so let's see what's in the headlines today there's tons of headlines today new zealand's a society divided by wealth new housing report oh my goodness housing minister phil twayford talks about the results of the stockade on housing commissioned with the report's authors, Alan Johnson and the Salvation Army, Ontago Public Health Professor Philippa Howden, Champa, Champa, and, and okay, get to the article. Housing Minister has released a sobering stockade on housing, which has found homelessness was worse than thought. Uh, what, well, you just figure this out? And there was growing, floating population of people in insecure housing. Dude, I figured this out. I'm a Portuguese guy living in the Pacific Ocean, uh, off the Pacific Ocean in a small town called Merritt, British Columbia. I figured this out years ago. Why are they just figuring this out now? It warned that New Zealand was quickly becoming a society divided by ownership of housing and its, rela and its related wealth. Wow. Wow. Give this guy a Nobel Prize. It also showed home ownership has slumped dramatically since the 1980s, especially among Pacific uh, Mario people, Mario people, Maori people, sorry. And Auckland's housing problem was created by a mix of population growth, partly fueled by migration and the con construction and land development sectors hindering housing affordability. It also pointed to potential time bomb that the impact on housing affordability on the elderly. What, they didn't think people were going to get older? Finding the proportion of older people who were living in mortgage-free homes had dropped 86% to 72% since the 1980s because they're passing on wealth to their kids and grandkids because they can't afford to eat. They can't afford to buy clothing. The housing report was authored by economist Shambhu Akubu, University of Ontario professor, public health. Okay, again, blah, blah, blah. Sober, sobering reading. Typhoid said it was sobering. 
It paints a sobering picture of devastating impacts of the housing crisis, particularly on children. Well, you know what? Look at the bright side. A lot of people aren't having children because they can't afford to because of this disastrous, greedy money. And, you know, all you have to do, like James Corbett says in his reports, follow the money and you'll get your answers. Homelessness, transience, and sub substandard housing have had l lasting and sometimes even deadly effect on your youngest. It includes discussion of hidden homeless population that is officially monitored or recorded. That is not officially monitored or recorded. And remember that article I was reading about the lady living in her car now for God knows what with her, with her son in some station wagon? However, community emergency housing providers report they are full capacity and that their data from last year indicates that for every 10 homeless people approach them, 8 out of 9 are turned away. You know what, New Zealand? Do you want to know what the deal is? I think if you guys created more jobs, okay? I know it's easier said than done, but, uh, but look at what's happened in the U.S. They've created tons of jobs. I have family calling me from Pittsburgh. They're working back in the steel factories. I got family calling me from, 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 from Fall River, United States, telling me they're back to work. Everything's back to normal. The whole Obamacare has been scrapped. Thank God they were paying through the nose for nothing. And, and, and no, things could be fixed. People can go back to work because there's always, we live in a consuming society where we consume things. We need to consume things. Anyways, people keep keep uh, commenting here. People keep consuming things. And, and you know what? If we're in a consuming world, let's start producing and exporting. Anyways, Otogo University public health professor Philippa Howden Champion Champion said the number of children who did not live in homes owned by their families had grown. This had fundamentally major consequences for stability in communities. So people, this is what's happening. This is this is really bad. Especially Aust uh, New Zealand, Australia, everywhere, but New Zealand for sure, because of the lack of, of buildable land and stuff, and, 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 and it needs to basically find a way to resolve itself. Because New Zealand's population is supposed to be X amount, and that's it, because it's designed for X amount of people. And now they're blaming all, all, these, all of this uh, population growth. What population growth? No one's having kids. Government set to unveil results of housing stockade. The government will unveil the findings of its housing crisis report today. In November, the government uh, commissioned. Where, when is this article from? It's from the other day. Yeah, it's from. It's from. It's from tomorrow. It's from the future. In November, the government commissioned three experts to carry out the housing stockade, saying it needed an up-to-date picture of the housing market. At this time, the housing minister, Phil Twyford, said that stockade report was necessary after years of spin and denial by former government. Mr. Twyford will announce the findings tomorrow morning at Parliament. The authors have used the latest data from the government agencies to look at the housing market, including rentals, homelessness, and decline of home ownership. And you know what? It's a housing spokesperson, Michael Woodhouse, said... Mr. Typhoid should be getting and delivering promises that he gave to the New Zealand public, which was increased housing supply by 100,000 dwellings over the next 10 years. Fine, but what about the empty units? They need to address how many empty units are sparsed across the country and how it needs to be fixed. They, they need to address this issue because it's mandatory. <sighs> More reports. I get somebody, somebody's messaging me here. What is this? Uh, what is this? Oh, it's nothing. It's somebody messaging me at another New Zealand. So I'm getting Facebook um, messages. Guys, follow me on Instagram. It's easier because it's in English. My Facebook fan page is in Portuguese. Now, Facebook has gotten to a point where it's not even letting me open my messages anymore because they don't consider me to be someone of... of because I have a Portuguese fan. It's a long story. I've been making documentaries for the last 10 years in, in the Portuguese-speaking language for Portuguese Africa and stuff that's been happening. My stuff has been debated in universities across Angola and Mozambique. Um, 
end endlessly debated, and and even uh, Mozambique is looking to restructure its constitution. On the uh, documentary I made, Mozambique, where's the richness going? Anyways, so there's a lot of people messaging me on from both uh, both sides, and it's getting confusing. Message me on Instagram. You'll see the link above. Anyways, housing report paints sobering picture of crisis. Oh, God. A report into the state of housing in New Zealand paints a sobering picture. And it's basically it's basically the last article I read reworded. One key found up to 90% of people seeking emergency shelter, shelter were turned away. The other one said 8 to 9 people. So this is 90%. For every 10 homeless people we appro uh, who approached them requiring only 1 or 2 people could be accommodated. So they're re rewording the articles. Housing crisis worse than, worse than thought reports expert. Expert reports. What is going on here? This is crazy. Expert commissioned by the government to investigate the housing crisis say it's even worse than they thought. This morning, Parliament Housing Minister released a stockade to report ordered again. Same article. Too many people were slipping through the cracks. People, look, if you want to fix this problem, instead of building more affordable housing, create more high paying, higher paying jobs. Get the people out of this rut. Get them into higher paying jobs. So eventually they could buy out all the vacant uh, investment-owned homes that are l lying around vacant, littering all over, littered all over New Zealand, all these empty homes. They could go ahead and start buying those homes up with better paying jobs. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Again, New Zealand doctor, a stockade of New Zealand housing, key findings, government solutions. Let's go to the government solutions here. Government solutions. Okay. MSD has been asked to set up its working, securing further transitional housing places in the lead up to winter. Well, remember, Southern Hemisphere, winter. Winter is going to be kicking down the door in New Zealand in about seven months. So, I mean, they're going to have to figure something out with the amount of, 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 of this global warming where everything's freezing over. That's another topic for another day, which I'm not going to, I'm not going to touch right now. But, but all this global warming that has been just taking everything over. Anyways, so uh, government solutions. MSD has been asked to set up its work uh, securing further transitional housing places and lead up to winter. Officials now investigating a new system for recording and monitoring the number of homelessness. The government su supports and is looking to scale up housing first approach to find permanent solutions for the homeless. The government is committed to increasing the stock of public houses. MSD is working to complete the rollout of 2,100 transitional housing places across New Zealand in mid-2018 as of 31st of December 2017. There were 1,901 transitional housing places secured for tenanting, 799 of those in Auckland. There has been a significant increase in the number of transitional housing places being secured with 1,138 places secured since May 2017. So someone's doing something about it, which is great and I think it's fantastic. Again, more messages coming in. Okay. Government author, New Zealand's housing is a cluster. Government commissioned what it calls warts and all looking into how New Zealand... Why are they looking into this now when it's already beyond? Beyond. It's not beyond repair. We could fix this. Anything could be fixed. Communication is the key. And this is lack of communication here, people. More messages coming in. Anyways, let's keep going here. The government has commissioned that it calls for warts and all. The housing stockade is authored by Alan Johnson, the Salvation Army economist. Again, back to the same thing we talked about. Children are getting sick and dying. Each year, 6,000 children are admitted to hospital with disease like to poor quality housing. Those children are 10 times more likely to die within 10 years that follow. It's these contaminated homes that children are moving into. This is not right. New Zealand needs, needs to take its housing back. The people need their housing. People need to function. People need to get out of this damn rut they've been in in the last, what, 10, 15 years in New Zealand. Let's put, 
New Zealand aside for a second, and, and, and Australia's housing bubble's been since 1979. That's another problem that New Zealand's facing. You know, people immigrate and move to different countries to try and make a better life. When they leave New Zealand to Australia, and then things are just, if not worse, are more expensive. And it's destroying the fabric of the culture of what it means to be New Zealand. You know, a New Zealand or a Kiwi, I want to visit New Zealand one day. When my English gets a bit better, I want to visit New Zealand one day. I want to take my family and show them your country and show them what it means to be a Kiwi. Who and what represents you guys and and did the, did the fabric but it's falling apart at the seams let's keep going let's keep going taruanga taruanga auckland way above severely unaffordable what what 20 30 times more auckland has been ranked the ninth most unaffordable city a city in survey more than 400 cities in nine countries with taranuga even worse so the annual demographia survey found that Tarunaga house prices were 8.9 times the median income, just just a sniff worse than Auckland. Severely unaffordable, 8.8. Survey of Co. Arthur said Auckland had improved its ranking on affordability, but f but from fourth least affordable last year because of rising incomes rather than falling prices, according to Housing New Zealand. That's according. So whatever they say, I don't know. Do you believe it? I don't know. A <laughs> uh, uh, Abolition of the urban limits of Auckland and introduction of bond financing for infrastructure will make change. I'm sure label, labor will implement both. Too affordable. Housing has been three times the median. Three times? Why don't you try like 12 times the median income? Why are they lying for? Severely unavoidable five times the median income across New Zealand. It's about 5.8 times the most of most major cities. Auckland and Tour, uh, uh, Taro, Tara, Nanga, I'm sorry guys, we're way above that. One of the biggest challenges is that we are all working in isolation. We have found a way of working together. you got friggin' social media together to fix the problem of housing affordability in New Zealand and I think I definitely, it definitely could be solved, she said. The survey, uh, the survey only refrained that councils and government needed to look at the issue of contesting and skill shortages in the building industry, Mr. Freeman said. Collective impact initiatives have worked overseas and would, were, would work in Auckland, she said. We can implement straight away much better reporting. And so we reporting, you're going to, you're going to, okay, I hope they mean reporting as investigation, not imp reporting as in news. Ten-year housing plan is needed to put in place the three-year political cycle. Not enough to make a difference, Ms. Freeman said. So I think they need to address the empty homes. And then there's this guy again. Anti-foreign house buyers back down on the cards. So you know that New Zealand's planning or they've been working on banning foreigners from buying prop property in New Zealand. And that means myself too. But which is a good thing. I've been to three other countries I wanted to buy in. And they looked at me and laughed at me. That I'm an outsider. They can't sell to me. So maybe New Zealand should take that step and actually do a mirrored, uh, a mirrored, um, God, a mirrored immigration system. What other countries offer us and what we offer other countries. We just copy what they do. So I, I've been to several countries where I was laughed out of the bank or not even out of the bank. I was laughed out of the real estate office for being a foreigner and they won't sell to me unless I marry somebody and it goes in their name and then when I die, I, they have no right, you know what I'm saying? Okay, I'm getting a lot of messages here. Let me just fix this here, people. So this guy again. The government might ease a key part of its anti-foreign house buyer ban, allowing overseas people to develop and build new properties in New Zealand and keep them than rather being forced to sell within a year. At Auckland Housing Collective action forum last week housing minister phil tarford indicated that two attendances at warren Mayha may mayhoon's auckland headquarters that the aspect of the proposed law change could be somewhat softened the form organized by lennon freeman is seen to be made he to, to be made headway in auckland's housing crisis Ted Manson of Commercial Developers and Investors Mason, TCLM, asked Trayford on Thursday meeting about the clause of Overseas Investment Amendment Bill, which had its first reading on the House before Christmas. Is a finance and exp 
expenditure select committee for what submissions close in three days. Manson, uh, Manson wanted to know about the clause stating foreign buyers must sell properties they develop within 12 months. Would foreign buyers be able to develop and hold properties? He wanted to know. We're considering that very point right now, Troyford answered. We have lots of submission on it. My views is that first version of the bill didn't get right, get its right, and we are cons uh, considering a submission to fine-tune it. And we want to protect the domestic housing market from uncontrolled offshore speculation, but we want to encourage offshore investors and development. The clause would uh, force non-residents and non-citizens to sell residential and lifestyle properties they build within 12 months. This is much harsher than is in Australia, where foreigners are allowed to buy residential properties as long as they develop new residences, adding to the overall national housing stock. That's a disaster. More empty homes. A spokeswoman for Turford this week referred questions to the Office of Asso uh, Associate Finance Minister David Parker as they are uh, leading the legislation and will know about a fine-tuning. Parker's spokes spokesman said he was not at the meeting, so did know the context of what Twyford's remarks were made. So in all fairness, the best thing to do is maybe just do a mirrored immigration law what does a new, what is a New Zealander allowed to do if they immigrate, for example, to Mexico, to China, to Thailand? What could a New Zealand get away with when it comes to employment, housing, immigration? There's a lot of countries that people like from Canada can't go to. Like they could visit, but they cannot do nothing. But people from that country come back to Canada and do what they want to do. But there should be some sort of a mirrored. Um, immigration law to protect both parties so that one person doesn't feel you know left out and then the other person gains everything you know you know what i'm saying i'm just making it fair what will happen i think new zealand what they need to do is just uh if they ban home for foreign uh, foreign ownership they're protecting the, the the their people they're protecting their way of life they're protecting their sovereignty i don't think it's uh, xenophobic because um uh, xenophobia is more of wiping out another culture uh, with war, ra uh, wars, and, and, and type of, you know what I'm saying, that kind of uh, cleansing of the land. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what to tell you guys. All I could tell you is that New Zealand is headed for a, like a, a reset. It's going to hit its reset button soon. It's out of control. I'm not sure what it is is going to happen. Um... But I really hope they could fix this because I think they're on to something when it comes to... We're going to find out Q1. Q1 is going to come first week of April. We're going to get our Q1 reports. Hopefully, it's not written in New Zealand by a real estate company. It's actually written by a private entity that could go in and look at what's really happening in the numbers and giving, giving us a really good Q1 report with good solid numbers so that we could understand what is happening in New Zealand because this is crucially important for the people, right? Anyways, let me know what you guys think. Comment below. I'd like to know your uh, your 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 feedback on this. And uh, don't forget to follow me on uh, Instagram because they're shutting down my Facebook pages. Everything I've worked hard to build. Um, Facebook would. I have. Uh, here, I'll show you what it looks like. I worked really hard to build this up. I worked really hard to uh, to build my presence. And. Uh, with my documentaries and stuff. And this is a very famous quote that's going around Africa. Africa never has, it's in Portuguese, but I'll read it in English. Never has a real democracy because it's very easy to manipulate a corrupt country. And that's all over Africa. This is my art. This is an article that was written about me in the um, English papers talking about um, what's going on and stuff and what I've been doing and how. It talks about Mike Martins, also known as Miami Mike, documentary maker, Terra Lucifone production, and amateur journalist at N News That Matters, based out of Merritt, BC, Canada. Mike has used social media to get his message to African youth. He talks about ways to be creative and using ideals to better Africans' way of day-to-day -day life. He targets Portuguese, uh, Portuguese Africa, making its doc documentaries in Portuguese with a passion for the Portuguese culture and history. He feels the Portuguese were ripped off when it comes to historical events and discoveries. 
His documentary, Mozambique, Where is the Richness Going?, has been played in local television and has sparked debates across every university in Angola and Mozambique where his videos are played and analyzed by students. Mike has been contracted by several African radio stations to debate his opinions on uh, with uh, other online guests. Mike questions the inner core of corrupt African to uh, topics. Uh, a uh, few never touch on such as fair constitution by the people for the people. So basically, I've done a lot in the last 10 years by I could die in peace knowing I'm not manipulating or screwing people around. My page has 120,000 fans. On average, I reach sometimes like look at this picture I put up. For I'll give you an example. It's got 5,100 likes on it. And I could even boost it if I want for more people to see. I don't care. This one is... Uh, video I put up this morning but unfortunately I can't even reply to any of my videos I can't even edit any of my videos I can't even do anything anymore it's not giving me the the uh, the power to do this anymore so it's kind of maybe shutting me out that I am a person of unimportance which 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 I'm not too I, I don't care I just want to make things better is all let me know what you guys think. Comment below on this. This is, um, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's, it's, uh, yeah. So right, let me see if I can zoom into this for you guys. So you can see this just a bit better because a lot of people like to lie. There it is here. 120K likes, 39 this week. And uh, that's on my fan page. But like I said, they're trying to wipe me from history. I made a video about that this morning, how... They will eventually re rewrite history in about 100 years so things didn't look so bad during our time. Let me know what you guys think. Comment below and thanks for watching.